This video will review Shimano drop bar lever hydraulic brake bleeds using the ParkTool BKM-1 hydraulic brake bleed kit. For Shimano flat bar levers and for other brands of disc brakes, see our video playlist here. Brake bleeding requires a thorough technical knowledge of the braking system. If in doubt, or if your procedure is not working, contact the brake manufacturer's website for their model-specific information. It is important to always use the appropriate brake fluid for the brake being serviced. Never use a DOT fluid for brakes designed for mineral oil. Conversely, never use a mineral oil in brakes designed for a DOT fluid. Mixing fluids can cause damage to the components and lead to brake failure. Additionally, you should never share bleed kits between DOT fluids and mineral oils. You may also want to anticipate any advertent spills and drips on the floor. Dispose of any fluid in accordance with your local waste disposal authorities. Typical tools and supplies for this procedure include the BKM-1 Hydraulic Brake Bleed Kit from Park Tool, appropriate mineral oil for the system, hex wrenches, 7mm wrench, Park Tool Piston Press PP1.2, tire lever or cone wrench, clean rags, isopropyl alcohol, spent fluid container such as a bag or bottle, angle finder, toe strap or zip ties, safety glasses and gloves. We will be using this STRX810 lever to walk through the bleeding process. If your model is different, see this repair help article that describes the bleeding of other Shimano drop bar models. No matter the model, this video will help you understand the basic bleeding procedure. Remove the wheel. Rotate the bike so there is a consistent uphill travel from the caliper to the lever. For rear brakes, the bike may need to be tilted. Lower the stand if necessary. Remove the brake pads from the caliper. Reset the pistons back into the caliper body. Install brake bleed blocks between the pistons. Hold the bleed blocks in place using a brake pad screw from the caliper. Remove the cover from the caliper bleed nipple. Depending on your caliper model, there may be different locations for the caliper bleed nipple. Here is an internal nipple below a cover. This is open and closed with the bleed screw. This model has a separate bleed screw as well, but the nipple is on top of the body. This flat mount uses an external integrated bleed screw and nipple. Install syringe holder above the caliper. Now prepare the syringe. Find the hose with one open end and one threaded end. Thread this into the syringe and snug it. Slide the hose compression sleeve over the open end of the hose. Fill the syringe about two-thirds full with the appropriate brake fluid. Get any bubbles out of the syringe. Hold it upright and slowly and carefully push the plunger until fluid just comes up to the end of the tubing. Now place the syringe in the syringe holder. Next, we will be attaching the bleed funnel to the brake lever. Locate the bleed port screw, which will be located under the lever hood. The bleed port location varies by model and the procedure for removing may be different. See the repair help article at parktool.com for more information. Pulling back at the front of the hood of this lever reveals a bleed port here at the front. This model has a bleed port at the front, but in a different location. Here, the hood is pulled from the back to reveal the bleed port. And in this model, the bleed port is near the middle of the body. With the STRX810 we are working on, the bleed port is at the front. Here, it is a good idea to strap a clean rag around the lever to help protect the hoods and bar tape from any brake fluid. Remove the bleed port screw. Watching for the O-ring, make sure it leaves with the screw. This STRX810 port screw uses an M7 thread and will require the silver extension from the PKM1. Thread the extension onto the funnel. Now thread the funnel into the port, using care not to cross thread it. Remove the stopper from the bleed funnel. 
These hydraulic brake levers are designed with internal channels to the fluid reservoirs. To ensure the air is fully removed or burped from the lever, it is necessary to rotate the lever to specific angles. The amount of rotation depends on the model of lever. Again, these are described at parktool.com. When rotating handlebars, always be careful not to damage any internally routed wires. Shimano provides reference marks to align the bleed port position. For the RX-810, look on the outside of the body for these molding marks. This is your reference point for the initial rotation of the lever and funnel. Rotate the bar so this mark is flat to the ground. This puts the funnel tilting forward 20 degrees from vertical. Fluid will now be pushed up from the caliper bleed nipple to the funnel. Using this example, place a 7mm box end over the nipple. Then secure the hose over the nipple. Slide the compression sleeve firmly up to help secure the hose to the nipple. Using the wrench, open the nipple one half turn. Push almost but not all the fluid into the caliper through the system and up to the bleed funnel. Close the bleed nipple and remove the syringe. If the fluid comes out dirty or contaminated, it should be changed. Plug the funnel. Remove the funnel and dispose of the fluid. Reinstall the funnel to the lever. Next, tilt the bars so the reference line on the lever is now 45 degrees upward. This places the funnel 25 degrees back from vertical. Make sure the funnel is about three quarters full with fresh clean fluid. The fluid will now be allowed to flow from the funnel downward and out the caliper bleed nipple. Select the hose having no fitting on either end. Install one end into a waste disposal bag or receptacle. Place the compression sleeve over the hose. Place the 7mm wrench over the bleed nipple. Attach the hose and again use the compression sleeve to help hold the hose in place. Loosen the caliper bleed nipple on half turn. Squeeze the lever gently to start the fluid flow from the bleed funnel down and out the caliper through the waste hose. Tap along the length of the hydraulic hose and caliper to encourage any bubbles to dislodge. Keep an eye on the bleed funnel and do not allow it to run out of fluid. Add fluid as necessary to avoid allowing air to enter the brake lever port. When no more bubbles appear in the drain hose, close the caliper bleed nipple. Leave the funnel in place. If near empty, Add fluid to about one quarter full. Pull the lever to maintain pressure on the pistons. Hold the lever to the handlebars using a strap or zip tie, or have someone hold it for you. Quickly open and close the caliper bleed nipple once. Pressure will be lost at the lever. Remove the strap and repump the lever until it feels firm again. Repeat one more cycle of opening and closing the caliper bleed nipple. Reinstall the caliper bleed plug or cover. Remove the strap from the lever. Check that the caliper and brake line is free of air by repeatedly squeezing the brake lever. It should feel firm. Even if the caliper and brake are clear of air, there can still be air inside the lever. To help clear any bubbles at the lever, rotate the bars to the designated burp position. For this lever, rotate so that the lever surface behind this port is level to the ground. This places the bleed funnel 45 degrees forward from vertical. Squeeze the lever a few times while inspecting inside the funnel for any bubbles. Now once again, tilt the bars so this reference line is 45 degrees upward for a second burp position. This places the funnel 25 degrees back from vertical. Squeeze the lever a few times while inspecting inside the funnel for any bubbles. Rotate the bar so the funnel is vertical. Plug the funnel and remove it from the lever. 
checking that the funnel O-ring is with the funnel. Install the lever bleed port screw with the O-ring in secure. Clean the lever of any mineral fluid. Return the lever and bars to a riding position and secure the bar binder bolts. Remove brake blocks and clean the caliper with alcohol. Install brake pads, retaining pin, any retaining pin clip, and the wheel. Pull the lever repeatedly to bring the pads to the rotor. After bleeding, remove hose from syringe and remove adapters from the hose. Let the hoses drain. Make sure any hose clips are open. A little remnant mineral oil in the syringe is not an issue. Otherwise, the syringe can be taken apart to be cleaned at your discretion. For the procedure here, we were using the STRX810. For different models, see the Repair Help article at parktool.com. Additionally, for new models, see the manufacturer's website at si.shimano.com. Thanks for watching. You can find hundreds more videos like this one on our channel here on YouTube. And we're constantly working on more. So be sure to subscribe for the latest content for Park Tool. And check out our website, which has even more content to help you make your bike better.